Um, I'm James, part of the team here, and uh, what a beautiful day it is, isn't it? Um, I mean, as you can see, I've got my shorts out. I hope there's some others. Um, spring has arrived, um, and it, it, it's all happening, isn't it? It's so beautiful out there. And um, I just love seeing all the color, all the green coming out, um, and spring has arrived. But I wonder if, as you look at beauty, I wonder if you've ever wished you had the power to make everything beautiful. Zoe and I have got a bit hooked on Sort Your Life Out by Stacey Solomon and her team um, come into a house. They, they get all the possessions. They get them all out. They take them over to the big warehouse. And Stacey looks at the people in the eyes and says, you need to change your ways. We, and they help um, these, these families upcycle, recycle, and get their house looking new. It is a transformative moment. And I wonder if you've been dreaming of someone who could not only sort out your life, sort out your room, your, your house, um, your garden, your streets, your offices, but what about the power to completely heal the world. The world where there are wars, there are conflicts, there's famine, there's poverty, and there are sick and injured people. At Easter, we celebrate the action of the one, the author of life itself, the man resurrected from the dead, who brings a tectonic shift in the way the cosmos works. For he so loved the world that he died and he walks out into the glorious day and he is living now and making everything new. And he has this beautiful name and he promises to wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. His beautiful name is Jesus. Here at Citizen Church, we want to see the nation knowing Jesus, and we want to play our part to build the kingdom, to breach loneliness, and to bring people home. And it's through the power of the living name of Jesus that motivates us, that gives us an ability to play our part in seeing the nation knowing Jesus. So how do we live beautiful lives well, the book of Acts shows us how the Spirit leads people to do beautiful things. And we can't do it alone. Jesus' followers, Peter and John, are in Jerusalem where people have gathered all together to celebrate Pentecost. And they meet a layman at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they and all the crowd see the layman completely healed. So let's read Acts 3. Um, verses 11 to 21. It should come up on the screen. But, you know, feel free to follow on your phone. But before that, let's, let's just pray. Jesus, open the eyes of our hearts so that we may see you, so that we may see your beauty, and so that we may witness to you in all things that we do. Amen. So let's read along. You might want to open up your app or um, follow on on your phones. Or if you're a bit more, you know, old school, you've got your Bibles. Here we go. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. That would have been a place that Jesus would have walked and taught. When P Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you, you stare at us as if by our own power and, or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate. Though he had decided to let him go, you disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man who you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name 
and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God, that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything, as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. Have you ever played the staring competition? You know that playground game where you stare in people's eyes, see who will blink first, our eyes going red, tears coming down. In Acts 3, Peter and John start a staring competition with a lame man. Peter says, look at us. And the man expects to get something from them. And then Peter says, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you, is the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. If Peter and John's intention is to, to win a staring competition, they've done it. The man's whole well-being is healed. He is not only physically healed, but he walks into the temple dancing and praising God. It's the most beautiful thing that the disciples can do. It is to give the name of Jesus. They know the power of the living name of Jesus, and they give it. But it's hard to ignore. It's hard, and sometimes we ignore it. The other day, I was walking with a friend, and we were walking through town, and there was a man who just just said, "Do, do you have any change? And I started to walk on, and um, my other friend, actually, he he stopped and looked at the man. But I didn't look at the man in the eyes. I looked at my wallet and looked to see if there was any change, but I just walked on. Time was ticking. I had to get to a meeting. We may feel that we do not have the means or time to sort people's lives out. But Jesus has the power to do beautiful things. So let's not do the ugly thing of running away. Let's take time to stand and stare and see the power of the living Jesus. Growing up, um, I used to love this advert that would come on for Center Parks. You might remember it. You may not. But it's a beautiful sequence where there's some swans on a lake. And there's this poem that is spoken. I'm going to read it to you. It's by William Henry Davis. What is this life if full of care? We we have no time to stand and stare, no time to stand beneath the boughs and stare as long as sheep or cows, no time to see when woods we pass, where squirrels hide their nuts in grass, no time to see in broad daylight. Streams full of stars like skies at night. No time to turn at beauty's glance and watch her feet, how they can dance. No time to wait till her mouth can enrich that smile her eyes began. A poor life, this if, full of care, we have no time to stand and stare. Peter and John stood and stared in the living power of Jesus. People stood and stared at the power of the living Jesus. This lame man who is healed is a sign of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, the author of life itself. The power of the living Jesus is a beautiful thing. In verse 11, it says that all people who were astonished So it is the resurrection power of the living name of Jesus that transforms the man's life. And later in chapter 4, verse 1, it says that people believed in the message, and it grew to about 5,000 people. When was the last time 
you stopped and stared at the power of the living Jesus. You may remember the time where you met God in worship, his presence and power. Perhaps it was when you were first baptized. Or maybe you've seen or heard things that are beautiful. Let's stop and stare in the power of the living Jesus. And I know it can be hard. Hebrews 11 says, Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. The problem is that even when the crowds see the power of the living Jesus, they immediately look to the superstars, to um, Peter and John, rather than the power of the living Jesus. So for us to play our part, to see the nation knowing Jesus, it is to step out in faith of embracing the unseen, the work of God. All healings are beautiful, like we see in this chapter. They are spiritual as well. And when they happen, we love to explain them away. How might the living power of Jesus interrupt our everyday life? Every Tuesday morning, we gather as a team and we share um, things that are beautiful in, our, in the lives of the church and of one another. And one person shared this week Paul's message in Romans 10, 14 to 15. And it says this, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. You see, we see the beautiful and the ugly things in life, don't we? But we all get to see the power of the living Jesus. And sometimes it looks a bit ugly, (laughs) but God makes it beautiful. Sometimes it isn't visible, but sometimes it is. Secondly, we are all invited to be beautiful hands and feet and see people healed through the power of his living name. Theologian Willie Jennings um, says that disciples are watched, especially by those in need. Disciples must be seen, especially by those in need. Peter and John are seen, Peter prays, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And the disciples witness the power of the living Jesus. They stand out from the crowd, and the layman is miraculously and completely healed. Peter immediately points to the living power of Jesus. God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. We can be beautiful hands and feet with the ugly and beautiful life. We can be fearful. We can be fearful and maybe at stepping out in faith. I wonder when was the last time you made yourself weak, going forward with a bit of faith? When was the last time you made yourself like the lame man? Last time I preached, I had a terrible back, and it was just before we had Baptism Sunday, and I didn't know what to do. It was a bit scary, actually, because when you, go, when you put someone down in the water, you take a lot of weight, and I didn't know what to do. And someone in Pontypridd prayed for my back. And on Tuesday this week, he came into the office, and the first thing he said to me was, James, how's your back? I'd completely forgotten that he had prayed for me in Jesus' name that my back would be healed. And today, it is healed. Thank God. Praise God. That's good. We need to praise God for those things. And you see, that is what God does when we pray in Jesus' name. I wonder if you believe in the power of the living Jesus. The layman was a regular He would come to the temple gates. People would take him there. His community would bring him there. And everyone would have known him. And he was asking people, perhaps for the wrong things. But he did ask. And Peter and John gave him the power of Jesus' name. So I wonder if you want to ask someone today to pray in Jesus' name for you. Jesus has the power to do beautiful things. So why not invite others to pray for you? 
We become witnesses so that all might see. If God can raise Jesus from the dead, he can do immeasurably more than we can think or imagine. Because he is living. Christians are witnesses of the resurrection and the life through Jesus' power. And we can be refreshed by his presence. We witness to the living power of Jesus. I wonder what kind of eyes you see through. I wonder what kind of eyes you see through. Whether they are impatient, like mine when I was stopped in the street. Maybe they're stubborn, restless. Maybe we do things in our own right eyes, like the refrain that runs through the book of Judges. We get tempted to judge people through human eyes rather than follow what has been given to us by God. Even from Genesis 2, verse 7, when humanity chose to eat from the, from the tree, our eyes became open, knowing good and evil. I wonder if we do ugly things in the eyes of God. Peter and John do not forget ugly eyes. They remember what happened to Jesus which reminds the, the crowd of what they got up to. The word, the word disowned is repeated twice. And then you killed. He doesn't shirk. He accuses. We can disown the living power of Jesus too and see things through our own eyes. Peter isn't perfect. He denied Jesus not once, not twice, but three times. And the leaders of the time, they were ignorant, too, of the name of Jesus. But the crowd cannot go on blaming. I wonder if you are here today and you have a desire to see the beautiful, living God of Jesus. And you've been waiting to turn your eyes to him. We are prone to trying to miss, to make our own beauty again and again. Perhaps... Perhaps you've been going through it with the crowd, seeing through your own eyes, relying on others to lead your life. There's this old hymn that I heard last week. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. So turn your eyes upon Jesus so that your sins may be wiped clean and that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Jesus says through John eleven twenty five, 25, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? It is by faith in the resurrection and the life that offers healing, restoring, and strengthening. So when we pray in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, it offers people complete healing of your whole person. And in verse 21, it says, we may still have to wait for God to restore everything as he promised long ago. We may have times when we have to wait. But at Easter, we have seen the power of the living Jesus. And we wait for him to restore beauty forever. Have you ever tried naming something? Have you ever tried naming something? Maybe a pet, a car. Um, we've been trying to... We've been, we, recently, we've named a baby. And um, it's one of the hardest things to do because you have this expectation that this name will influence that person forever. It will have meaning. So Zoe and I recently have decided we'll call her Hazel. Now, Hazel is a beautiful name, but Hazel is just a bush with shallow roots. And so we, what we had to do, we had to invent a, a middle name and we called her Belle. You know, which means beautiful, right? You see, when we pray in the name of Jesus, it doesn't just have shallow roots. Jesus is the real deal. Peter witnesses to the name of Jesus. 
And it is described here that God is servant, that Jesus is the holy and righteous one. Jesus is the author of life. Jesus, a prophet like Moses. Jesus, the Christ. And he isn't dead. He is living. So let's speak in the name of Jesus over everything, over every circumstance. Let's be all in. Have you ever wished you had the power to make everything beautiful? I would love Stacy Solomon to come to my house and sort my garage out. I'm sure you would. But it won't sort out everything and bring complete healing. We could try to look to ourselves or to other names or whatever, maybe to apply to get your life sorted. But it isn't our holiness or godliness that heals it, but it is by faith in the power of the living Jesus. God is not looking for superstars. He is looking for the humble and hungry, people who recognize the power of the living name of Jesus and and people who will pray with expectation that it is Jesus' power that strengthens and heals. During the Welsh revival, Reverend H.M. Hughes from Cardiff said, Now to all appearances, the revival has arrived, and it has many of the marks of previous great awakenings. Strong men are held in its grip. The Spirit of God stirs to their very depths. Whole neighborhoods and districts, personal eloquence and magnetism, fervor or mental power do not account for it. The only explanation is the one which the evangelist gives. It is all of God. We want to see the nation knowing Jesus, see the power of the living Jesus who witnesses through his name, through us, and we get to play our part in the powerful living name by his Holy Spirit. So how do we make beautiful lives? Let's stop and stare. Let's be beautiful hands and feet. Let's speak the name of Jesus, over every circumstance. Amen? Amen.